<laughs> so this is the scenario. It is still a bit, uh, you know, made up because it's still a spaceship moving at relativistic speed. And I guess it, it to some degree, even the measurement of events in space-time coordinates. Um, well, um, it, here it's made up because it's a spaceship. I think once you turn these descriptions into things like uh, elementary particle decay, then it can actually be pretty realistic. So, um, so, so without further editorialization, here's the question. It says, uh, spaceship, A, oh, I, I guess I have to start drawing this stuff. Um, so I, it looks like I'm gonna have two spaceships. So let me just uh, draw two spaceships. Uh, I have my spaceship A, which looks like a train. It's rectangles are easier to draw. That's uh, moving at some speed, um, moving at some speed of V relative to another spaceship. So let me just draw the picture for another spaceship here. And the way I'm drawing it right now, this is at rest. Observers in A and B set their clocks so that some event of turning on a laser in spaceship A, spaceship B has coordinates zero. So th this event is at origin. Oh. So I, I guess this is how I would have to, so it's a laser in spaceship B. So let me just uh, draw my uh, axis looking thing here. So like X and Y. And as some time equals zero, uh, a laser turns on at this point. And um, the axis here is set up exactly the same way so that at, uh, T equals zero, something turns on here. Okay, um, so that's uh, the kind of the setup. And just so that it doesn't confuse people, I'm not drawing space-time diagram yet. Uh, when I'm drawing space-time diagram, it should have an axis for time, which I right now don't. So um, uh, part A, it says an observer at the origin of B, oh yeah, at the origin of B, turns on the laser at time equals zero as previously described, and then turns it off at some later tau in its time. It asks, what is the dura time duration between on and off as observed, as observed by an observer in A? And it asks, give your answer in terms of tau, c, and p, and other numerical factors. So you have to imagine an observer standing here moving at some speed of V relative to B, then from the, this observer's perspective, what you have is a moving clock. Because if I, uh, if I modify this drawing so that I'm illustrating the observer in A's perspective, it's really the spaceship B that's moving at speed of V to the left. And so this is a clock that's moving, moving clocks are slow, which means if there's an, uh, something that takes time tau in, um, in the reference frame B, then it'll take longer time in A. So the time duration in frame A should be uh, gamma tau, where gamma comes from this uh, 0.9C. Um, so gamma should be one over square root of one minus beta squared, which is one over square root of one minus 0 0.9 squared. And you should get a fairly large number. I think this is um, something definitely bigger than two. <laughs> so, um, so that's gonna be the time duration uh, in frame A. It's gonna be something longer than tau. Okay, that, that's just the length of contraction. Uh, uh, sorry, not length. That's just the time dilation. You've seen that before, so it's not new. <laughs> you know, it, this uh, scenario here is the exact scenario described in the derivation of time dilation formula. And that formula is valid in the situations where it was derived. Now B, a rod of length one meter is laid out along the X axis in the frame, B from origin to uh, this point. So I guess what it's describing here is something that's been laid out parallel to the direction of motion from, from the origin to some distance one meter 
along the x-axis. That's the important part. Because if it has any component along y or g, that particular dimension won't get Lorentz contracted. It's only the dimension along the motion that gets the Lorentz contracted. And it asks, what is the length of the rod measured by an observer in the frame of a spaceship A? Again, a B is moving to, relative, moving to the left relative to A. So A is going to see Lorentz contraction. So moving, moving rulers are short. So the answer here is gonna be uh, one meter. That's my proper length, length of the ruler in its own rest of frame, this time divided by gamma. Remember that gamma is always a number bigger than one. So when you want something shorter, you divide by it, not multiply by it. So, so yeah, that's, uh, um, that is it, <laughs> um, A and B. So A and B can be done by simple application of time dilation and length contraction. So these are scenarios in which you can use the formulas we derived last week and they all work fine. Now, one thing you will see as you um, overuse these formulas in consideration of special relativity is sometimes you run into a situation that may be described as um, as a self-contradictory. You might see you might see paradoxical situations, um, and I think. Yeah, so in this particular question, we don't bring it up, but just so that you have some place to start thinking about it, imagine there being another ruler in the reference frame of A, and um, it's one meter long, they are passing each other, and imagine there being another observer in B who measures both his own ruler and the ruler in um, Alice, well, A, Alice's reference frame, then B, Bob, will measure this ruler as being shorter than his own ruler. But as we just talked about, Alice measures this ruler to be shorter than her ruler. So you run into this paradox, whose ruler is shorter? And at least relying on the simple formulas of time dilation and length contraction, it is really hard to resolve those paradoxes. Uh, which is why we introduced the full Lorentz transformation and illustrate a few scenarios where this Lorentz transformation uh, really is different uh, in quality from simple time dilation and simple length contraction. So, okay, so uh, I think uh, as we start with the C, I want to start drawing my space time diagram. Uh, I think that's gonna help me illustrate these events much better. So, um, you know, what it's describing here, two events occurring on spaceship B, a photon arrives at the origin of B at its time t equals zero, and another photon arrives at uh, x equals one meter at t equals zero. Oh, oh, I guess I'll just start right with the uh, space-time diagram because uh, this is not describing a photon leaving this point and arriving here. It's two different photons. It, it, it can't be a single photon that's at these two points at the same time. It just won't work. So drawing the space-time diagram, I have my space axis and my time axis. Uh, sorry, let me do a little bit of erasing so that I have more space to work with. Um, I have my time axis CT here. So this is going to be my, um, this uh, uh, perpendicular axis is going to represent my uh, frame for uh, uh, spaceship B, frame B. And in this frame, what the question is describing is that time equals zero. So I'm considering the points along my X axis. Um, the two separate photos arrive at two different locations. I have uh, I, at the original B, so I have at X equals zero, where one of the two photons arrive. And I have the location of, oh, maybe I shouldn't, I'll just leave that label. <laughs> Let me label that as not one, but um, as, alpha. Um, and at another space-time coordinate, I have another photon that's arriving at uh, x equals one meter. This is going to be my beta. 
So um, the question asks, as measured by an observer in frame A, how far are the two events separated in space? And yeah, I give you this caution that the answer here is not the same as in B. So if uh, you see that, oh, this is, uh, if you say that this is one meter apart, it undergoes length contraction, let's do length contraction, then you'll find that um, it doesn't work or, or at least the answer you calculate isn't gonna be accepted. So, so let me write down uh, Lorentz transformation so that we can actually work through Lorentz transformation and actually work out the answers. So this is uh, um, what Lorentz transformation says. So my unprimed coordinate is gonna be frame A. And later on, when I draw frame B, uh, sorry, frame A, my frame A is gonna be the primed coordinate. So uh, prime uh, for the variables. So with that convention, um, yeah, and my A is the moving frame. So I have switched it back from describing uh, things from uh, A's perspective where B is moving. I've gone back to describing A as my moving frame and B as my stationary frame. So, so when I have coordinates in the reference frame of A, those will be my prime, the coordinates, CT prime, X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. The way these coordinates are related to the coordinates um, in the B frame. So for example, this point had a coordinate value of zero second and one meter in the X direction. This has the coordinate of again, zero second and oops, not one meter. Um, this was a zero second and zero meter. And this point B is at zero second and one meter. So when I have these coordinates that are the unprimed coordinates, I can get, I can get the primed coordinates, the coordinates in the uh, frame of A uh, through this Lorentz transformation. CT prime is equal to gamma CT minus beta X x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta ct. And the y and z, those perpendicular directions, their coordinates don't change. And um, I'm continuing to use the convention where beta is equal to v over c. I'm measuring speed in units of speed of light c and gamma is equal to one over square root of one minus beta squared. So, Oh, so I, I guess it's just a matter of plugging in numbers. Um, I can actually just uh, calculate gamma. In fact, I wrote down an expression for gamma up here, you know, one over square root of one minus 0 0.9 squared. That's gonna be some rumor, numerical value, have it handy. And the, um, and, and the, the, so the separation or uh, in space, uh, but in frame A is going to be given by this expression here. So I'm thinking of, okay, my change in the X prime coordinate. Um, and when you go through it, it's gonna end up being a change in X or difference between the um, difference between the origin and this point here, uh, minus beta C times the change in uh, times well, uh, C times the change in time. So uh, here it's a little bit easier because these two events have the same time coordinate, t equals zero. So I don't have to worry this about this part. All I have to do is plug in, hmm. So I, it looks like I'm doing gamma times one meter. So it says gamma times one meter. And if that confuses you, because I thought it was supposed to be Lorentz contracted, why are we multiplying by gamma? Uh, wouldn't that make it longer? So if that confuses you, I want you to hold on to it and let us continue this description of these two events in the reference frame of A. Uh, see what else we might see in the A's reference frame that'll explain 
why these two points are separated out farther than one meter. So it says, considering the same two events in C, how far are the two events separated in time as measured by an observer in frame A? Uh, and if that question confuses you, I, I hope it confuses you a little bit uh, because these are the events that were described as being simultaneous. And um, after it confuses you a little bit, I hope you realize, oh, simultaneity is relative. A and because they were simultaneous in the frame B doesn't mean they are necessarily simultaneous in frame A. And in fact, we can work through here, the Lorentz transformation. So we are looking at this portion of the Lorentz transformation. What are the changes in the time coordinate for those two events? So I'm considering the change in time here, then, um, then it will be the change in time in the A frame that's gonna be zero. And I have this term minus beta X. So these two events are separated in time. Um, and I guess I don't, Remember if it's looking for a positive answer or one with a sign, I'm going to guess it's just looking for the magnitude. So if it's just looking for the magnitude, then what you need to plug in is gamma times beta, that would be 0 0.9 that was given times, uh, oh, uh, the delta X. So this delta X, the uh, difference in space in the, B reference frame, so that'll still be one meter. So it should be gamma beta times one meter. So, so that's the um, that's the that's the amount of time that passes between um, the occurrence of this event in the reference frame of A and the occurrence of this event. And I, I think actually, if you work it out properly, then this event happens before the beta event happens before alpha event. So, and between those two events, this much amount of time happens. Oh, and you know, make sure you convert your unit to 10 to the minus eight seconds. So do your conversion. Um, so realizing this, when you work out E, that'll help you answer the original question that I raised earlier as I was writing this down. Why is this longer? Isn't um, you know, are do, do moving things uh, contract. And the reason this is longer is because this quantity here, it doesn't represent length. It doesn't represent the distance between two space point really in um, reference frame B. Um, so, so what the, uh, so um, let's see. So, um, so the amount of uh, distance that it would move is um, the spaceship B would move in the time uh, calculated it, uh, D. The, um, the amount of distance would be this amount of time times the speed. So it would be gamma uh, beta one meter times uh, beta or uh, gamma beta squared. Um, uh, uh, times one meter. So that's uh, how much the spaceship would move. So um, if I draw the, the space time axis in the reference frame of A, this is what it would look like. This is the CT prime axis. This is the X prime axis or what I call line of simultaneity. And in the amount of time between the time at which event beta happens, that would be represented by this point in the city prime axis. In this amount of time, the spaceship moves by this amount of this, uh, it moves by, uh, how do I uh, represent it here? So, um, the spaceship moves by this amount of distance. And that distance, the difference, the amount of distance that um, that the spaceship moves from here to here, that accounts for that, uh, that, that difference or 
error between what would be properly considered the Lorentz contracted the distance, Lorentz contracted the length that you got in beta, and the the this weird result uh, uh, that that weird result that you got in C. And in fact, if you take do this, take the result in C, subtract result in E, uh, and you work through a little bit of algebra, you will see that yeah, that is uh, what you get got in B. So. Um, yeah, so this is a kind of a tutorial question that um, that I did so that I can yeah. highlight this, uh, really the difference between the result that you would get through simple application of time dilation and length contraction formulas, the fuller picture that you can see when you put these events um, in discrete C through the full Lorentz transformation. And um, so this particular question isn't, and it's to, unless you think too much about it, it's not presented as a, um, a special relativity paradox, but um, um, when you do see special relativity paradoxes like the ladder paradox or the, um, I, I guess uh, I, one version I presented was um, the train and the station paradox actually last Monday. Um, when you work through it, the key there in understanding it is uh, fully internalizing that simultaneity is relative, that um, and uh, what's really paradoxical is our implicit assumption of simultaneity when it's not explicitly stated. Now, in question five, which I did last Friday, um, I did notice a slight bit of a mistake, uh, which is um, in part D, if you are uh, literally uh, plugging in this, oops, uh, plugging in this as your numerical value as your answer, it'll be wrong in two different ways. Uh, one is what I did highlight, that, you know, doing it in units of 10 to minus eight seconds. And the other thing is that when you work out this number, uh, you should realize that that's not in any kind of unit of any kind of second. Mm -hmm. So it's in an entirely wrong unit. So the reason is that this quantity here that I wrote down, it's supposed to be CT. And the question is looking for T. So even before you convert it to 10 to minus eight seconds, you have to first divide out C so that you go from unit of length to unit of seconds. So um, this is a mistake that you will see me um, making from time to time, rather often, and I'm only half embarrassed about it. And this comes from my um, habit of using C equals one unit. And I do know I, in the lectures, I said I wouldn't use this unit system. So it is a mistake. I will fix it whenever I see it, but uh, don't be, too surprised when I make it because, <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's an easy one to fix when you see it because um, all you have to figure out is, okay, what factor of C do I need to account for this?